A computer is a state machine. Basically all it is is do something and then find the next state to go to. What really goes on underneath is certainly not realized. When you look at the ocean surface, it's hard not to be mesmerized by it. But what we don't often think about is how much of that surface is influenced by a myriad of invisible processes all happening just underneath. Similarly, computers rely on countless calculations working internally, so you can jump from your web browser to your email to the game or music player you have on in the background. The computer, as the machine we know today, would not be possible without Unix. In the days before Unix, computers were massive things, roomfuls of things. A single computer does a single thing at a time, and very, very expensive. Suddenly, there was the mini-computer revolution. It took the insight of two bright computer scientists, Ken Thompson and the late Dennis Ritchie, who, with very different but complementary skill sets, were able to put their heads together and launch what would become the forerunner of the modern-day operating system. Unix was built for me. I didn't build it as an operating system for other people. I built it to do games and to do my stuff. I was always into games. Games was my thing. I used to play pinball machines and I would pick the lock in the back of the pinball machines. Then I'd study the diagrams that I had. That's where I learned a lot of this kind of logic. I pretty much did the initial Unix work. Then when Unix was up and running on a PDB-7, Dennis came along and started writing programs with me on it. I would describe Dennis Ritchie as a exceptionally nice guy who sort of may have come across shy, but inside he was one of the kindest, most giving people I've met in a long time. He was sharp. He was much more mathematical than I. Once he got an idea, he was almost bulldog. You know, he'd just, he'd just work on it until it happened. We worked very, very closely for very many years. There was one point where they each wrote a piece of code to do something, some uh, small library function kind of thing. And when they compared the versions, they were essentially identical. So their thinking processes were very, very similar. Sometimes inventions come from an individual's pursuit to push the limits of existing technology for their own use. Often, this pursuit ends up benefiting us all. Together, Thompson and Ritchie eclipsed existing limits to develop Unix, and their work has given us access to a dimension that existed inside the computer from the very beginning, one that now lives on as their legacy, always lying just beneath the surface of our everyday lives. There's no user in Unix. There's no third person. It's first person. It has no more than it needs. It just does what it's supposed to do. I think that that's the difference between Unix and operating systems before Unix.